This is exactly right. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the a very special mini sode. Today's uh, mini sode is unlike any we've ever done before. That's right, but it's the, similar to like them, but because th- yeah, you won't be confused. <laughs> yeah, it's not like it, we're going to throw you a total uh, yeah. yeah. curveball. It just has a theme because it's brought to you by it's brought to you and to me and to Karen <laughs> by the uh, movie Searching. Yes. that we got to go to the Sony lot in Culver City and yeah. sit in this like. Well, wait. So okay, go. We basically get a call mm-hmm. saying they want to do like a special mini sode where it would be like a big long commercial for this movie. Mm-hmm. So come down to Sony and watch this movie in one of their screening rooms. And like these little theaters, it's like a little, like if you were rich and had a mansion and had like a movie screening room, it's like that. And the chairs are huge and comfy. And it's like, it's like, it's it was awesome. It was really fancy. The Sony lot's old. It's yeah. like one of those ones that's in Culver City. It's yeah. been there forever. Gorgeous. And we were just like, Living the highlights yes, for at this, sure. in this screening. And then we got to see a movie that we actually liked because <laughs> yeah. I think both of us, as the credits were rolling to begin with, we were like, oh, wait a second. What if this is terrible? <laughs> if this is like one of the many films I see on a, on a weekly basis yeah. and enjoy because of the badness. We were like, oh, no. But thank God. I think like 10 minutes in, I was like, OK, we're safe. Yes. John we're- Cho is like the freaking best actor. OK, so if you saw Harold and Kumar, I'm sure that's not the first credit he would love for us to give although he might be quite proud it's one of my favorites um but john cho is the lead in this movie and deborah messing is the uh, another lead maybe first lead maybe yeah. second lead i don't know I, this is one of my favorite things about living in los angeles is or uh, to me the best thing is mm-hmm. you can live in los angeles you can go into a movie theater watch a movie come out and then accidentally run into the person that was in the movie that's right and so very soon after i saw harold and kumar in the theater um I was at uh, a Starbucks very very near you, and he was walking Ooh. out as I was walking in. I don't think, I think it was the next morning. It wasn't the same day. The next morning? But it was the next morning, and he had this little, like, hat on. He is so good looking in I real know. life. It was like, it, he's very star-like in yeah. real life. So it was very exciting. So to see him in, like, kind of his own movie, or like, yeah. it's a vehicle for him, was super, super cool. And then we And it's can't, a thriller, and there's just, like, crazy twist at the end. The thing is, we can't tell you about the most interesting part of it of course of- but it's essentially we told you hear the ads you know it's really cool uh karen of course as a tv writer was three steps ahead of me in under knowing what the twist was <laughs> she was like i know what it is I'm like and then i just started guessing and i was wrong but it was it was really fun but i have to say usually um uh, no brag in in most movies i get the twist much quicker than that and i was really hunting yeah. for it and i was just and then when i got it i was like okay but it's that's part of the fun i never get the twist and i guess <laughs> so wrong constantly <laughs> loudly so it's fun going to movies with me you know why i think i do that is mm. because i saw the sixth sense with my friends mm. and all of them were like it was so obvious from the <gasps> beginning and i was like no it wasn't not until the very final moment did i know how great what that feeling was when like suddenly it was revealed and you're like holy shit yes and then and you have to go watch it again yes so that's <laughs> what? okay searching is, is in line with one of those thrillers where you're like what did i just see what's happening yeah and it's very so it's very we're very excited to be doing this oh and so sony is giving away a bunch of tickets to the screening on the 23rd if you are in the fan cult. exactly um, so we're gonna post these links in the fan cult it's a ton of cities steven steven's gonna read them very fast right now go atlanta austin boston charlotte chicago cincinnati cleveland columbus dallas denver detroit houston indianapolis kansas city uh, Las Vegas, Miami, Minneapolis, Orlando, Philadelphia, Phoenix, Pittsburgh, Portland, Sacramento, San Antonio, San Diego, Seattle, St. Louis, Tampa, Toronto, and Washington, D.C. Yes. That was amazing, Stephen. If you're in the fan cult and you live near any of those cities, go onto the fan cult forum. These links will be put up. You can get two passes and go watch this movie for free. I think it's going to be cool. Yeah, I think it's going to be cool because it's going to be screenings. It's like one screening, so it's going to be a ton of murderinos there with you, right? Oh, I guess. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. That'll be fun. 
Uh, a ton or like four. Or four really exciting ones. <laughs> <laughs> what we're saying is keep your eyes peeled. Right. Don't just start yelling weird shit. Also, we don't really know how this works. We've never done it before. But, <laughs> okay, um, so what we asked for is for you guys to have, like the theme was then to go together was uh, what, uh, you know, what was your, uh, someone or a story or you hiding a secret life? Yes. So, or living a secret life. And Steven said we got over 600 emails Jeez. just in the week that we solicited. It's amazing. Was it 600 or more than that, Steven? It was a little, it was like about 600, essentially. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Just from the, uh, he, call, he called those for, for ones that um, he, you know, as he as he told me earlier, after a while, it wasn't good enough just that your dad had a secret family in a second city because like he started getting bored. Yeah, he was like common. Yes, it's happened. <laughs> this is the story, which of course it's not common or no. boring for the people it happens to. But uh, you know, there there then de- there was uh, variations on the theme that were very interesting. You had to up the stakes, and I think yeah. we got so many, and there's so many good ones that I think we're just gonna start you know adding these to the regular minisodes and throwing them in here and there because they're, they're really good who doesn't like a secret life yeah. like it's a fascinating reveal totally sorry just as quick sidebar did you see the guy that tweeted the picture this is what i found in my wall and it's a cat <gasps> hanging in the in the paint of a ceiling like a little hammock no. it's like there's a little pooch dead no no oh. it's in fact it's looking down and its <gasps> eyes are rolled up so it looks like a demon it's the funniest picture <laughs> it's on our twitter feed you have to go look at it it's so oh my good. god steven's getting it to me oh, oh yeah. my Here. god he was like i found this in my wall <laughs> Wow. <laughs> like the paint is peeling and this demon cat is just like. So, and of course, a cat would be able to get up yeah. in that and just be like, mm, that cat is so like, fuck you. That that's face. My new bed, that's that where cat. I live now. Fuck you. All right. You want me to kick this off? Sure. Uh oh. Here we go. Yeah, I'm out of I'm out of iced coffee. Let's see. Uh, subject line on this is just crazy secret life. Dig People it. got it. Perfect. They got it. Easy. Georgia, Karen, Stephen, and animals. On the most recent mini-sode, you asked for outrageous stories about secret lives, and I decided to share mine. Um, about 10 years ago, my dad came home and started telling us about an elderly couple he met while working as a police officer. He said that he was going to help them on their farm and do odd jobs and earn some extra money. We thought nothing of this story and didn't question it. About a year or so into my dad helping the couple, he came to us again and said that they'd won the lottery, and that they were going to give him some of their winnings. Again, huh? this didn't seem off to us. The couple gave him $5,000 and we went on a nice family vacation to Universal Studios in Orlando. Oh my God. A really fun place to go on vacation. Um, around this time, my dad started acting very different. He started drinking more and withdrawing more from the family. After we got back from this vacation, he said he won a hunting trip to Canada. Still didn't seem weird to us. <laughs> He's an avid hunter and he showed us a letter from a respected outdoors company detailing the trip. Oh my God. He goes to Canada for a week or so. About a week after he came home, we started getting weird calls on our home phone. A woman kept calling saying she was from his company and asking how he liked his trip. This happened incessantly oh my god uh-huh. finally after the 10th or 11th call <laughs> oh my god asking the same question we figured out something was very wrong <laughs> my toes are crunched right now we find out that the woman calling was his girlfriend uh-huh all along the elderly couple <gasps> was code for his mistress oh my god his mistress actually won the lottery what and paid for our trip and random shit that around our house that was real yes. how is that the most <laughs> insane part the real part isn't that the best dude but so she wins the lottery she's paying for shit random shit around the house um and he the dad said he brought uh, or the this email says he brought home from the quote elderly couple this secret ended the 20 year marriage 20 plus year marriage (gasps) to my mom stay sexy and question everything jordan oh my god oh the lottery part like makes that story it's it's because i yeah. was like what are they did they rob a bank like how, then how's the money gonna i didn't know like yeah and you're or you're thinking does he kill that old couple like is this the sure. is this one of those things where you're like and then my dad was an evil person or whatever yeah. and it's like but they're trying to figure out a way to basically launder lottery money into the family oh my <laughs> god and i love that this fucking girlfriend's like she, like maybe he's ignoring her she's like hey yes. how was that trip motherfucker yeah c- this is just a this is a customer service call to make sure you were p- pleased on your trip it's a great way to like drive him crazy yes Dr- like that's a great way to infiltrate and just be like 
Well, it's also clearly maybe an indicator that she was a touch crazy because Mm -hmm. if you call anyone more than five times, (laughs) and I don't care if it's your best friend or your mother, you're crazy. (laughs) Like 10 10 times phone call, walk away. Yeah. You got to walk away. Like ever or in a day? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm <laughs> counting them up. You're on Ever. number eight for me. Holy <laughs> shit. Okay, but how about when you don't? It's only when you don't answer, though. That's why I don't answer the phone. I don't want to cut anyone out of my life. When I call you, I just you. picture you rolling your eyes. Of well, most. you know, the problem is huh. most of the time I have my earbuds in. Oh. And I'm singing along terribly to like uh, some song. And then I startle and you then it's like, it. ah! <laughs> And then you just automatically resent the person, even if they're calling to tell you they love you more than anything. You're and that like, you won the lottery. Yes. Okay. All right. This is called Secret Life. My fellow intern, Tony slash Kayla, the sextortionist. Okay. Sex tor... How do you say it? Sex tourist? It's like sex... Or like t- sex tortionist. I-N-ist. Sex tortionist. Like an extortionist, yes. but with sex. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> okay. Cut that out. <laughs> Keep uh, it in. Hi, Karen. Turn it Dor- up louder. <laughs> Turn that part up <laughs> really loud. Put some bass in it. Yeah. Uh, hi, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and Pets. I never thought I'd have a good story to share until you requested secret life stories. This doozy just came flying out of my memory bank. It's kind of dark, so I'll avoid going into too much detail. When I was 19, I interned for my first political campaign in the small Wisconsin town where I went to college. I was assigned to work for a really cute guy who shared an office with another staff member, as well as his intern, Anthony. We called him Tony. Tony and I spent a lot of time together by default doing intern projects, making phone calls and knocking doors for our candidate. On election day, we got up at 5 a.m. to drive around neighborhoods, hanging vote reminders on people's doorknobs. Tony was a bright, low-key, normal high school kid. We were both the kind of teenagers who gave up all their free time to work for a cause we believed in. Or so I thought. Oh. A couple months after the election, local and national news lit up with details about Tony, Tony's online persona, Kayla. Around November 2007, Tony began setting up uh, fake Facebook accounts, most notably a pretty flirty teenage girl named Kayla, to lure male classmates at his high school. Kayla coerced the boys into sending her sexually explicit content of themselves and then threatened to really threatened to release the photos and videos to the whole school if they didn't follow through with what she had asked. Whoa. Predictably, her demands began to escalate. Kayla made some of the victims meet up with Tony in person who claimed he was also being blackmailed. I started working with Tony about eight months into his online scheme and he continued doing it the entire time we worked at the campaign. Um, da 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 da. Tony's reign reign of fucked up terror came to an end soon after the election in the most teenager way possible. He did something really stupid at school that bit him in the ass. A week after election night, the last time I saw him, he emailed an anonymous bomb threat to his school, quote, as a prank when using the Internet in the school library. Police traced him, traced it back to him, which probably took two seconds because this kid was had never heard of an IP address. and He was expelled. (laughs) After that, the victims came forward and police seized his computer to find all the content he collected of his victims in very obviously named file folders. (laughs) Oh, no. In that one year period, Tony had 31 victims. (gasps) Some were as young as 15 and at least seven had been sexually assaulted by him. Whoa. So the part I didn't read was that he would have them meet up with him and be like, "I'm um, I'm also a victim. And Kayla said, we have to do this or she's gonna like expose us so that was how he like what got the them to hook fuck? up with him isn't that fucking insane yes um but okay when he was arrested in 2009 his case became the first big national story about sexual ex- extortion online and launched the term sextortion into the national conversation whoa i received a letter from his attorney sometime after he was arrested asking if i would serve as a character witness When I worked with him, he seemed like such a regular, unremarkable dude I probably would have forgotten about over the years. I almost wish I could go back in time and see if there was something off about him that I missed, but he was probably just a sociopath who could live two different lives like no big deal. Yeah. Anyway, there's no way in hell I was going to defend his ass in court. I don't want to end the story in a bummer note, so here's a fun fact about the same campaign. Remember I mentioned uh, interning for a really cute guy? We crossed paths a few years after I graduated from college, and next month we'll be celebrating our three-year wedding anniversary. Oh! 
There's a lot of scumbags in politics, so when you meet a good guy, you gotta lock him down. Take notes, political murderinos. Thanks for reading my story. I am working on a campaign right now, and I look forward to your podcast each week so I can take a mental break and recharge my batteries. Can't wait to see you in Portland in October. Stay sexy and don't campaign with internet creeps. Liz. Oh, my God. Yeah. High school. Like, high Hi, school. Uh, high school. Also, that that story makes me think of that movie, Tickled. Did you watch the documentary, mm, Tickled? Totally. And it's a, it's a similar, but it but like on a larger scale thing of, of, ex, of extorting people and manipulating them. And do, that's like the whole thing about putting things like on video or on picture and sending them on the internet. Totally. You're, you become, you're at the mercy of a person. You have to know who they are. A lot of these do have like black, the ones I read that I'm not reading have like blackmail shit in them. Yes. And like that, I mean, it makes me so glad that we didn't have fucking internet in high school because I would have done something very stupid. Of course. I mean, we had internet, but we didn't. It wasn't like that. That's insane. It makes me think of my cousin Kim and she what she tells my nieces like before they go do anything social because now they're well, Sophie's in college, but Anna's still in high school. And she just says, don't do anything you don't want everyone to know about because (sighs) that's what what it's going to end up being. So you don't want to follow you for the rest of your fucking life. You just have to you have to be the first line of defense instead of trusting other people. I'm just now learning that lesson. So I haven't even learned it. I can't imagine a fucking high school person. Well, I mean, Jesus. Okay. With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Craft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Go by. Let's see. This is <laughs> Secret Life Roommate Edition. Yes. Dear Karen Georgia Stephen and Pod of Pets, I w- have an absolutely insane secret life story about a previous roommate of mine. Mm-hmm. We'll call this roommate Kristen. Kristen and I met through a college program and became fast friends in 2014. After a semester, we became roommates with another girl we were friends with and things were great. Uh, I would have considered her my best friend so much so that I would have asked her to be a bridesmaid in my wedding. Uh, anyways, uh, after a year of living together, we graduated and decided to move to a new city together. We both got jobs in our profession at different locations. We both made separate friend groups, but this is where things started getting weird. I met her friends for the first time in August, and they were super nice and friendly with me. But then the next time I was around them in September, they all gave me the cold shoulder. Uh-uh. I couldn't really shake that feeling that I'd done something wrong, but thought maybe I just wasn't as close with them as she was. Fast forward a few months, mine and Kristen's friendship had totally diminished finished uh she made plans to take me out for my birthday but the morning of canceled due to period cramps i understood but was disappointed i felt like i had done something wrong unknowingly and was being punished for it i had tried to bring it up a few times but she just brushed it off and pretended everything was fine eventually i just accepted that our friendship was falling apart in march of 2017 she ended up in the er for some mental health issues Uh i met up with her and her friends at the hospital and they proceeded to ask me why i'm there and Quote, do you think your presence here is going to help her mental health? I'm shocked. I asked them, stunned, 
what they mean and their response is don't you think your breakup is a little too much for her to deal with right now that's right ladies she had told these girls that we were dating back in august unbeknownst to me furthermore in an effort to end her lie she told them we broke up hence the cold shoulder for a month and it all began to make sense that she wouldn't hang out with me in public i wasn't invited to her birthday party in my house what, what? <laughs> and she unfollowed me on social media while what? they were still living How together awkward <laughs> <laughs> All that stuff was done in an effort to cover her lies. Um, not only that, but her new friend group showed me all of our, quote, breakup tests texts <gasps> after she was released from the hospital we had a talk and she had no remorse or explanation for her lies needless to say we we're no longer roommates or friends thank you for all you do me and my not pathological liar friends love your show and can't <sighs> wait to see you in atlanta stay sexy and don't get scammed by your roommate harriet i have so many questions for her. i want to know how her friends reacted like her the girl's friends reacted when she was like <clears throat> when she was like none of that is true well i think the key part there though is if she ended up in the hospital for mental health issues yeah. maybe everybody went oh this is a little shakier than like we thought yeah like everything got on like questionable ground sure but yeah oh my jesus that must have been so bewildering where everyone's immediately yelling at her we're like everyone's mad at you like yeah mean to you uh, for no reason i feel like i'd be going crazy right like what happened what went wrong all right so this one is called da, 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 da. i can't read you the name of the thing but all right karen georgia steven and various animals I just finished listening to Minisode 83, where you ask for secret life reveals, and my friends have been begging me to send this story in, so here we go. Back in the 70s, my parents were in a bowling league. Over the years, you get to know other people in the league, and you all become friends, acquaintances, whatever. One of the, uh, their friends always invited my dad to come over for taco parties, but he never went. <laughs> <laughs> was, oh, I don't know why, but all the, I was like, mm-mm, suspicious. Taco parties. Taco mm -mm. parties, no. Mm-mm. Fast forward a bit, and one night, my dad and his friend Sam are at the alley when their friend walks in, acting very animated. He shakes my dad, dad's hand and puts an arm around Sam and says to them something along the lines of, Hey guys, I don't think I can stay very long because the FBI is following me. They pretty much blew him off thinking he was crazy. The next day comes, and both of my parents were at the local grocery store they worked at. They were 18 and 19 years old. Mm. And who walks in that morning but Sam holding a newspaper? My mom said that he looked like he saw a ghost. What's the front page story that day? Their bowling league friend from the night before had been arrested for multiple murders. <gasps> oh, and who was that guy from the bowling league? None other than the killer clown himself, fucking John, John Wayne Gacy. Gacy. <laughs> All oh, caps, fucking John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> oh, shit. Sam went on uh, to be his defense attorney. Oh, whoa. And Sam and my dad are still friends to this day. Whoa. He wrote a book about it a few years ago and signed a copy for my dad. I remember hearing the story from a young age, but I never really thought much of it until I was a teenager and realized who John Wayne Gacy was. Uh, doesn't everyone's parents bowl with notorious ser serial killers? No, just mine? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I got for now. Stay sexy and don't join bowling leagues with killer clowns, Alyssa. P.S. My dad would like to note that it was... Uh, the Plains PD following Gacy and not the FBI. <laughs> Lol, crazy clown. <laughs> wow. Uh, that just makes me think of in the, I think it was the made for TV movie or could have been the real movie. Brian Dennehy is playing John Wayne Gacy. And it, when it gets to that part where he's just like, he's like drunk in, during the day and driving around and just like trying to avoid the police. Oh my God. Like it just made me pick in my mind, in the movie, in my mind, it was Brian Dennehy walking into that bowling alley. And yeah. like, hey guys, he the FBI is following me. At the bowling alley. What if they had gone to his taco party and like been in the house? And and then he's like, who likes magic tricks? Down to the basement, everybody. Oof. Oh, Jesus, John. So insane. Okay. I like this one. Uh, the subject line is secret life. Great. Well done, everybody. Perfect. Good day, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and fur babies. I just have to say. <laughs> my name is Tiana, and I am an education assistant at a small private school in Canada. A group of my friends at work got me addicted to your podcast, and you guys have made my morning commute much more entertaining. When I was listening uh, to last week's mini-sode and you asked for secret life stories, I thought I may, may have one that is interesting. 
when I was nine years old, I was adopted. Growing up, my parents did not hide the fact that I was. They were always very open and honest. At 12 years old, my mom and I were sitting in the basement, and I started asking some questions about two pictures in my baby book. I have something attached to my head, and I'm being held by a nurse. I asked why I had that, and my mom replied that they were running tests. And then I asked what kind, and she responded to see if you had drugs in your system. Why the heck would I have drugs in my system? And my mom said, because you were not born in a hospital. So many thoughts are running through my mind, and then my mom proceeds to tell me my story. Oh, my fucking God. On November 25th, 1987, in Calgary, Alberta, two young boys were skipping school and took a route through a parking lot. The boys, 14 and 15, stopped to look at a cool car when one of the boys heard a soft cry of a baby. He looked down to find what he thought at first was a doll, but was in fact a real baby inside of a garbage bag, (gasps) head sticking out. One of the boys picked me up and ran over and both ran towards an older gentleman who helped me get inside to a warm place. The police said that if it had been an hour later, it would have been a much sadder situation. And yes, that little baby they found is me. I was placed into foster care and my now mom and dad became my foster parents at nine days old. They legally adopted me on my mom's birthday, May 2nd, the following year. My face was all over the newspapers and on TV and it was a huge story in Calgary. My dad at the time was a journalist and he was actually covering my story. The social services people thought that what a better place to hide this baby from the media than with someone in the media <laughs> no one at my dad's job knew that while covering this crazy story he had the little baby at home oh. i love it i was also dubbed mary olympia doe because Olymp- olympia because the calgary olympics were happening in just a few months oh. now if you're wondering why my parents waited to tell me the story um It was because a doctor told them that it would mess me up if they told me when I was younger. (laughs) Anyways, stay sexy and don't abandon babies. Tiana. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. That's the best. That's the best. That's, there's nothing. There's none. I don't even know if I should read my last one. (laughs) Do it. No, do it. I love that. Great job, Tiana. That was beautiful. We're so happy for you. I wonder if she has ever met those boys that found her. Those boys. I just got chilled. They're Tiana, Tiana, find those boys and say hello. Yeah. Let them carry you across a parking lot again. Yeah. (laughs) Take pictures of it. Show it to us. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Secret. Life lighthearted. Oh, secret life, life and hearted. <laughs> I get it. Was there a hyphen in there? There's somewhere? a hyphen, so I thought that, yeah, that I wrote. Okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. Hi, MFM crew. Hi. Uh, hi. My dad has always been my favorite person. We always, we've always been extremely close, even though he's uh, a naturally very distant person. Think Atticus Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird's Demeanor. Even He even looks like a young Gregory Peck and is a defense attorney. Wow. As intensely private as Karen's dogs are, he dislikes being noticed or congratulated to the point that he didn't even go to an award ceremony for be- him being congratulated. Uh, t- wait. For him being uh, an attorney of the year because he didn't want people to think he wanted a pat on the back. (laughs) Wait, are these people Irish? Did she say at the beginning? (laughs) No. (laughs) They're just like, you're turning down attention? Can't relate. Ha ha. Uh, Anyways, I found found out some stories I had never heard on my last trip home. As it turns out, he secretly anonymously pays for the uh, transport, food bills, and medical care of a janitor at his office who had to quit due to a chronic illness and couldn't afford a car or meds. <sighs> the jan- janitor has absolutely no idea who is behind it and due to my father's very distant nature would never suspect. He was even left, uh, he has even left anonymous envelopes of $500 to $1,000 in mailboxes of people he, he knew who said they couldn't afford Christmas presents for their children and waive fees for clients to be able to uh, buy gifts for their kids during the holidays as well i could go on and on but it just uh, goes to show that not every secret life is a bad one some people are secretly making the world a much better place he's helping us all stay sexy and not get broken down by the constant stream of shitty news <laughs> anyway thanks karen georgia steven all for all you do best jay oh my god i love that Isn't one that amazing the, and also so true like it, there are lots of people doing lots of very good things and they're, they don't want the credit. It's not yeah. about the credit. I don't get so it. So we'll never hear about it. Like that. Right. I remember somebody telling me, and I think it's come out at this point, when David Letterman was still on the air, he used to just anonymously donate thousands and thousands of dollars for scholarship money for Ball State, which is the college he went to. Oh my God. And like he, I just, anytime I hear about that at all, it's just so amazing because yeah, it's, 
you know, there's good there's good things happening out there. Dude, the first thing I do whenever I donate is put a fucking post up on Instagram to tell everyone I donate. <laughs> of course. Like, come on. That's why everyone does. But, you know, that's the thing about it is, and, you know, there's every once in a while people will email us um, talking about, like, I feel bad or I had a breakup or I feel terrible. Mm-hmm. What should I do? And that's the that's oh. the thing I got taught yeah. early is if you feel bad, help somebody else because it will make you feel so much better and you don't realize it because I think most of us weren't really, it's not a natural thing to do because it doesn't connect. It's uh-huh. like, but what about me? Uh-huh. Why do I have to put myself aside? And it's like, that's actually the good part. Get out of your own fucking world and and go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Extend yourself to someone who actually really needs help right. for real. That's a great, that's a really great advice. That's, a, ni- that's a nice one. Well, this has been so cool. What, yeah. a, what a fun, exciting kind of, um, you know, experiment, experiment and fancy commercial we get to do. <laughs> we love that. We love the opportunity that we get to kind of like host a movie like this yeah. for, um, for you guys. And, uh, and you know, hopefully we get to do it again. Yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah. Thanks for listening. You guys and uh, send your letters to my favorite murder at Gmail. We, we're, we're still taking these secret life emails. We're we love so the mo- secret life. So much fun. And don't forget if you're in the fan cult, you can, um, you can get uh, two passes to the movie searching brought to you by Sony. Um, at all this, uh, all the information will be posted. Stephen will post it on the fan cult, and you can find out mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. and stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye, Goodbye. Elvis. You know your line. You want a cookie? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs>